Ted, uh, good to speak with you again. Good to see you too, Murray. So we are, we're talking about an interesting company today, Thames Water, uh, the largest um, water and sewage treatment uh, business in the UK. And uh, this is from a consumer perspective. So we've talked about businesses in the past and their financials more from a professional perspective, if you're seeking to do business with them or invest in them. But here we're talking really from a consumer perspective. So, you know, how, who are the people that you pay your bills to and how are they using the money? And uh, I received a recent annual statement that they provide every year. And in there was this diagram and a, a bit of marketing material, but essentially what they're saying is, you know, for every pound that you spend with us, here's how we're spending that money. And, uh, you know, I thought it would be a really good idea to kind of dig into the finances and see exactly how are they using that money and do the numbers correlate with this particular image. So what did you, uh, what did you find, Ted? Well, um, so thanks a lot, Moeed. So yeah, so both you and I received this document. We're both um, uh, Thames Water customers. Um, I actually live very close to the Thames uh, tunnel that they are tunneling literally at the end of my road um, underneath the Thames to kind of take all the sewage out um, and stop sticking it in the river. And quite interesting looking at some of these numbers, always interested as soon as I get a document like this with nice, easy numbers to understand, I want to sort of dig around uh, and look at the financials. Now, uh, we're going to have to put a few caveats um, uh, on this uh, document. So first of all, um, let's remember that, for example, here they've got 17p on their team, for example. They're talking about how they spend money on uh, the essential services. I can't see that split uh, between what they pay to their engineers and what they're paying on the actual kind of, you know, running the business, which is the, the, the non-personnel. Uh, uh, um, they talk about 5p on powering their sonics. They're actually generating their own electricity. I don't know, maybe that's hydro, uh, maybe it's, um, uh, 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 yeah, maybe it's hydroelectricity, um, maybe it's um, uh, 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 solar power. Um, they talk about 4p on the government for example so um but they've got things like business rates and paye and national insurance and i'm not going to be able to see that in the numbers but i am interested in this they say they spend 15p uh 15p in every pound so 15 percent of my money uh, goes to actually their their lenders and 5p is being reinvested uh, back into um uh, the organization so some quite interesting, and, and they've got this uh, this 30p on infrastructure. So some quite interesting numbers in there, and I thought it'd be quite fun to see um, whether we can actually see those numbers actually in the accounts. So let's pull up their accounts. So I went onto their website and they've got an interim report. So this is an interim report. And what we're gonna see here is um, uh, the report for about, uh, for, for six months. So like every interim report there's lots and lots of you know pictures and you know words and there's sort of real marketing uh, material to tell us about how they're actually performing but we're interested in the consolidated financial statements here they are uh, signed off by PricewaterhouseCoopers um, and uh, let's just make this a little bit bigger so we can see it um, yeah, easily so uh, here we see the consolidated income statement so here is the revenue for the year. Now you'll notice that they've got two columns here. This BTL, this is the Tideway Tunnel. So what they're doing is that they're trying to say, look, there's a Tideway Tunnel operation going on, and this is separate to the underlying business because it's so big. And it was there last year, and it's there this year. Quite interesting that they show the revenue uh, for the tideway tunnel but they don't seem to show any costs for the tideway tunnel now i i you know there are people down at the end of my street with hard hats on there is definitely a cost going on so i'm not sure why they're not showing the um uh, the cost of the tideway tunnel versus the cost of the business so that was a little bit of a, a an anomaly there anyway um so what we're doing is we're looking we're comparing this number here um, and we're looking at it in comparison to uh, this number which is the cost of running the business now if you're looking at the PL account, the first thing you'll notice is that there's no cost of sales, Moeed. Why not? 
Well, they're not they're not a product business. They're a service business. Exactly. Yeah. So they're a service business. They're an infrastructure business. So infrastructure business, like often network, telco network operators, um, uh, energy businesses, anybody running these kind of infrastructure, national grid, for example, they don't do cost of sales. They just say, look, here's the revenue and here's the cost of running our infrastructure. So they go straight down to an operating uh, a profit. Um, and the operating profit for these guys is about 191 million. Okay, they've actually put it in as a, a, a 223 million. Um, but I've actually just taken this other operating income and I've just sort of stuck it down um, at the bottom here. So 223 million uh, uh, of operating profit. Um, and that works out. So I've got 191 million. It's about 20% which effectively says that we're spending 80 pence running the business um, and you get to, uh, you know, of your, of your one pound. And, and that looks, you know, pretty reasonable. What I thought was quite interesting though, looking at these numbers is these two numbers here together. So what we've got here is the finance expense. So the finance expense is the cost of any debt. And this is a debt funded business as we will see when we look at the balance sheet and the net loss on financial instruments. So they are using financial instruments in order to manage the cost of that debt. Without getting into too much detail, that's going to be things like interest rate swaps. So, you know, you, buy, you borrow some money, you take out uh, an interest rate swap, uh, which means that you can borrow on a fixed rate rather than a variable rate. Um, and then if the rate goes against you, you make a loss on that effectively. So I would put those two numbers together in terms of the cost of the debt, um, because obviously if you didn't have debt, then you lost on financial instruments. Um, and I reckon that those two together make 558 million pounds, which is 54% of revenue. So that would suggest to me that they're spending 54p of every pound uh, in actually, you know, servicing that debt and managing the, um, uh, the financial instruments. And you'll notice that we've got some fairly similar numbers for the previous year. Um, these are, in fact, 34% of, um, uh, of the total revenue. Either way you cut it, you're certainly above the 15p in the pound um, that that document was telling us about. So that's our first highlight. And, and obviously, if they're, if they're spending 80p on running the business up here uh, and they're spending 54p uh, down here, then they're going to be making a loss um, overall. Um, so that's, that's quite interesting, they're making a big loss overall. Um, so we kind of go, well, how are they talking about this, this 5p that they're reinvesting on our behalf when they're actually making a loss um, for the period? We'll come back to that um, in a minute. Let's go and have a look at their balance sheet. So the balance sheet, here, here's the balance sheet. So um, key numbers, just once again, we'll just run through the big numbers in the balance sheet. So up at the top, this is the infrastructure. This is an infrastructure business. They're going to have lots of intangible assets, sorry, um, uh, non-current assets. And the biggest number here easily is the property plant and equipment. And that's all of the sewage treatment works, the pipes in the ground, the reservoirs etc etc so that's kind of what we'd expect current assets relatively low there's no inventory a um, little bit of trade and other uh, in fact there's yeah, a little bit of other trade and other receivables um, otherwise uh, and, and, and some cash so nothing really a lot to speak about down here current liabilities um, what we notice here is that the current liabilities is bigger than the current assets okay so this is our working capital Usually that would ring alarm bells for us, but you know Thames Water very very strong cash flows. Um, if you think about it, you know we've all got direct debits. The money's just you know piling out of our account. You know cash flow is not really a big issue for them. And we also notice that the biggest number. Uh, let me just clear these drawings so that we can make it nice and easy. The biggest number making up the non-current, uh, sorry, the current liability is this number here, which is the current portion of their debt. And all they're going to do is refinance that. So effectively, they're going to borrow money to repay the loan. So they're not looking at these numbers up here to repay the loan. They're going to just refinance it or roll it over. Down the bottom of the balance sheet, 
we can see the non-current liabilities. Um, so the non-current liabilities is effectively the debt, um, 15 billion, and easily the biggest number is this here, it's the borrowings. Okay, so this is really a debt funded business. This is an infrastructure company. They've borrowed a ton of debt um, and they've used that money in order to invest in, you know, the infrastructure. Although, of course, the infrastructure is already there. So effectively, they didn't build it. They're just kind of maintaining it. But this is a debt funded business. Very little equity uh, down the bottom, relatively speaking. So we're looking, you know, when we start to kind of compare those numbers, um, we're looking at a company um, uh, which is, in, in, in terms of its capital, it's about 85% um, debt funded and about 15% equity funded, for example. We'll have a quick look at the cash flow statement, um, and then we'll come back to the balance sheet in a minute. So the cash flow statement um, uh, is, is uh, over here. And what we see is while they're making a loss, so while they are making that 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 loss that we reported in the income statement, they're actually generating lots and lots of cash. So very strong cash flows, and that's kind of a, a feature of uh, a utility companies like Thames Water. They generate lots of cash from their trading operations. So don't get too um, uh, distracted by the the, the loss on uh, operations. And then what are they doing with that cash? Well, lots of it is actually being invested. So, um, you know, here is the investment going on the purchase of property, plant and equipment. So we could take that 484 as a percentage of the revenue. And if you remember, the revenue was about a billion. So that's about, what's that? You know, that's almost half, um, you know, 50p in the pound being a uh, property, plant and equipment. So I think that, you know, maybe 30p, they're a little bit light on that. Um, I think that's a, you know, that's a, that's a good, strong um, uh, reflection there. So net cash used in, uh, uh, in investing activities. So they've got some proceeds from short term investments. Looks like they've sold some investments to kind of finance it. Um, and then the last part of the cash flow uh, is showing the financing. Financing, when we look at these top two lines, new loans raised and repayment of borrowings, we take those together, that's effectively showing that this company is refinancing. Um, and what we see is that they are, they're, re, there's a, they're making a net repayment, they're paying down their debt slightly. So effectively, they've borrowed 750 uh, million and they've paid, uh, repaid 1.1 uh, billion of loans, effectively. Now, what is interesting down here is um, looking at, so here's the interest that they're paying. So I expect that that's the kind of, that's the sort of number that they're using, a billion of turnover, 200 million of interest. That's around about the 15%. So that's probably the number they're saying. And that's what we pay to our um, debt providers, but there is obviously that cost on the financial um, uh, instruments as well. And what's also interesting is this number here. OK, so this number here says is the dividends paid. OK, and we'll come back to why it's particularly important uh, that, you know, why we're looking at why are they not paying out dividends? So um, let's just have a quick look back at the um, the balance sheet and the um, uh, if we look at the, um, the the borrowings. So the borrowings we can see uh, is note 12. So note 12 will give us some more information about this enormous number of borrowings. Um, and these guys are actually funded through, uh, 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 through bonds. So let's just nip down to note 12. So here we can see note 12 and we notice that um, they are, they're effectively, they're funded through they've got some bank loans in place and then they've got these bonds and these bonds have been issued uh to um you know out onto the open market so bond is just a tradable piece of debt for people who aren't sort of familiar with that so rather than going to the bank and borrowing money i issue a piece of paper which says whoever owns this piece of paper i'll pay an interest rate to and i'll repay the loan at the end of the period and that can be then traded around the market um, so this is quite interesting looking at, so, you know, they are, they are funding themselves through um, these bonds. 
So let's take a look at um, the other thing we notice is, is that we're looking at Thames water here. So if we go back to our original um, uh, uh, document, if you look at the Thames water website, it'll tell you about the holding. And what we've just been looking at is uh, in the bottom part of this, um, uh, of this diagram in the middle, that's Thames Water Utilities Holdings, which owns Thames Water Utilities and Thames Water Utilities Finance PLC. Uh, Thames Water Utilities is a regulated company because it has a monopoly. So it's very, very strongly regulated. Um, and the regulators making sure they're investing, they're not charging too much, they're investing in the future, they're maintaining the assets because you know it, it's pretty important. We don't want anybody to be asset stripping that, for example. But what's interesting here, and, and this is this is I think is is this is what's reported. Uh, so in the dotted line, that's the reporting of what we've just been looking at. But what's interesting is that actually the ultimate holding company is a company called Kemble Water Holdings. Um, and I did a little bit of digging, and it turns out that that Kemble Water Holdings is owned by a number of pension funds. So we've got the Canadian Pension Fund, BT Pension Fund, the Abu Dhabi Investment Authority, the China Investment Authority, and the Kuwait Investment Authority. So, you know, a number of different people owning a company which is not listed. So this is a private company owned by effectively sovereign wealth funds um, uh, and a couple of pension funds. And then there'll be other investors as well. Now, if you're old, holding a company which isn't listed, then you're not holding it in for capital gain, really. You're holding it for income. And if you're a pension fund, then that's really what you like. You like a lot of income. Yet they're not getting any income because they're not getting any dividends. So I thought it'd be quite interesting just to look at the Kemble Water um, accounts and see if there are any answers in there. So um, here is the, uh, the accounts that we were just looking at of um, uh, the um, Thames Water. Here is Kemble Water Holdings. So let's go and have a look. And I pulled these off uh, Companies House. So this is publicly available information uh, here in the UK on Companies House. Very easy to get hold of. So here's the income statement. Now, what we were looking at, if you remember, was, was Thames Water um, for six months. And Thames Water's six months turnover was about a billion. And these guys... Uh, their turnover for, for the full year is just over 2 billion. So in effect, this is really Thames Water. There's nothing else in here. So it's, it's you know, there are other companies which are doing things uh, uh, from Kemble Water down to Thames, but this is still really Thames Water. Uh, what's interesting here is that they're making a profit at the Kemble Holdings, and that profit is a net margin of 5%. And I'm guessing that that's where the 5p reinvestment of profits comes from. So they're starting to pull numbers from different parts of the, the, the accounts to kind of tell their story. Uh, we've also got the finance expense here. This is at 24% of the, the, um, uh, of the, uh, the revenue. So um, in effect, at a kind of they're making revenue of two billion uh, and they're spending uh, 25 percent, 25 P in the pound on the financing of that um, of that company. And if we go down to looking at uh, we just jump to the balance sheet for a second. Here's the balance sheet. I'll just nip down to the bottom part of the balance sheet. So, again, numbers very, very similar to what we've just been looking at um, at the group at the very sort of top group level borrowings. Um, uh, 12, uh, 12 and a half billion. And uh, the note 18 gives us a little bit more information about that. So, and again, this company right at the very top, if we look at the cash flow statement, we can see that the dividends are zero. So they are not paying any dividends at all, either this year or last year. So you've got a bunch of shareholders who own this company who are not taking out dividends. And you go, well, why are they not taking out dividends? And to a certain extent, you kind of say, well, they're not, it's not really making that much profit. And the reason it's not making that much profit is because it's paying out a lot of interest. And it's paying out a lot of interest because it is paying a lot, uh, because it has a lot of debt. And it, this is the note that shows all of the debt that they've got. So here we go, note 18. Uh, and there's a list here of all the borrowing. So here we have a list of all of the, the loan notes, the bonds that are being used to fund this business. And the question is, 
who owns those bonds. Now, these are publicly traded, you know, they're traded on the bond market, but I reckon, uh, and this is my conjecture here, uh, I reckon that the shareholders own the bonds. So the shareholders will have some form of preferential where the company issues the bonds through the bond markets, but they are issued to um, the uh, uh, to the shareholders who can then buy them uh, and get a, you know, a, a pretty reasonable um, uh, a rate of interest on them. Um, and you can look at the kind of the types of rates of interest uh, or the coupon rates that they're paying out. So 5%, 6.5%, 6.7%, 6.5%. You know, this is a company which is not going to go bust. It's about as low risk um, as you can get um, when we think about it. Some of them are a little bit lower, but these uh, these lower ones are index linked. So they're, they're, they're a great hedge against inflation. Um, this is a, a 2045 bond. So this is this mature. So if we take an example here, um, uh, let's just uh, look at this one. So this this matures in 2045. So they've got to give the money back in 2045. Uh, they've got to give back 40 million. Uh, and in the meantime, they've got to pay uh, about 2% interest, which is known as a coupon. So they pay 2%. But the key here is that it's index linked, which means that if inflation takes off uh, and interest rates go up, uh, then um, uh, it, it, that they'll be paying out more. Whereas this one up here is fixed rate. Uh, so it's paying a higher rate of interest um, uh, because if interest rates go up, it's still going to pay out 5%. So you could end up, you know, having a, a, a you know, getting a, a worse rate if, for example, interest rates go to 6% in the UK. So that's my kind of that's my kind of take on this is that, um, you know, we've got a we've got a company here which is owned by a bunch of sovereign wealth funds and investment companies um, which are effectively have, you know, loaded the company with a lot of debt and are using that in order to extract their um, uh, their their profits effectively uh, rather than using um, uh rather than using um, dividends, because, um, you know, dividends, it doesn't look good if you're, you know, in the media, in the news, and you're talking about all these big, bad water companies, and you're paying lots of dividends, they just said, we don't pay dividends. Instead, what they do is pay a lot of debt. Now, the last thing to remember in debt, uh, and we'll just finish on this uh, section here. So if we go back to the income statement, and here is my income statement we'll notice that if you have lots of debt, you pay lots of interest. And if you pay lots of interest, you will make less of a profit before tax, and therefore you will pay less tax. Now they're paying quite a lot of tax in 2020, but you can look at, for example, 2019, they only paid 17 million in tax. So Thames Water, this is a financial structuring, which is effectively a very effective way of getting the money out uh, off to uh, places, you know, these owners, you know, these, these sovereign wealth funds, for example, it's a way of getting the money out. And so effectively Thames Water is not paying any corporation tax because the money is being stripped out at the interest level rather than at the dividends which are paid out after paying corporation tax. So there we have, you know, effectively that's that's what you know that's what we're looking at with um with uh, uh, Thames Water. We're seeing a company uh, which is um you know it, it it's well regulated, it's 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 well run. You know, I've I've I've, I've done some work for them, um, but it's a really interesting one that you know that the story is this is financial engineering. This is a this is a company. Uh, Kemble Water, which is owned by external shareholders. Um, uh, the company is basically debt funded. I can't see who owns those bonds because that's effectively kind of, you know, beyond my, you know, I, I can't see that, but they're traded in the market. But I reckon that they're not actively traded. I think uh, that they will be held by the owners of the business. So the owners will own the debt um, and they will benefit from the payments of that debt. That debt effectively um, is, uh, uh, you know, you can call it a dividend by another name, but it's a much more tax efficient way of getting money out of the company. That was uh, that was. There you go, hugely, Marie. What do you think? Yeah, that was. Yeah, that, that was hugely interesting, Ted. I, I think I think a lot of our viewers would have learned something new there, which is just because someone's not being paid dividends doesn't mean they're not receiving money in some way, shape, or form. Um, so that that was very interesting to see about the bonds. Of course, it's conjecture. Conjecture, sorry, but um, at least you you get to the heart of the fact that someone is being paid. 
um, just not by dividends. And that was very interesting to learn about those bonds there, Ted. So um, hopefully we've awakened the financial curiosity of our viewers, right? So the next time you receive a bill or if you notice the label on your clothing or anything like that that you're consuming, hopefully we've, we've aroused your curiosity and you want to actually read more about the finances. But of course, if, if you would rather have us analyze the finances for you, uh, do leave us a note in the comments section, right? Like, share, subscribe. Uh, and we'll absolutely put together uh, a video for you based upon the company you want us to look at. In fact, we received one, I think, just the other day. So in a few days' time, we'll publish one that one of our viewers have uh, recommended for us. So uh, great to speak with you again, Ted. Thank you all, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. See you later, Mary.